What is Kanzuk? And is it the next superpower? Watch till the end to find out. The United Kingdom had been looking for alternatives years before its exit from the EU. The hunt intensified after Brexit. And one solution came in the form of Kanzuk. A collaboration between four major economies could form a third pillar of the West, in addition to the US and the EU. So, what is everybody waiting for? When Canada officially became a federal dominion within the British Empire on July 1, 1968, Queen Elizabeth declared that it was the beginning of that free association of independent states, which is now known as the Commonwealth of Nations. Fast forward to the 21st century, and the British Commonwealth offers little besides diplomatic communication between its 56 states. So, now Britain is aligning itself with some of its former colonies to form a more exclusive club. Kanzu is a proposed alliance between Canada, Australia, New Zealand, and the UK. It started off as a neat little idea in a 1967 book called Colonies into Commonwealth and has grown into the promise of a lifetime. All four countries have shared cultures and values that they can build upon. Historically, different proposals have suggested how this alliance could materialize. Some have argued for a Soviet Union-style federation. Others have suggested a geopolitical partnership. The most popular proposal was put forth by James Skinner when he founded the Commonwealth Freedom of Movement Organization, or CFMO, in 2015. He had experienced problems immigrating to Australia and Canada as a UK citizen, so he and his organization lobbied for increased migration, trade, and foreign policy agreements between the countries. Imagine if people could move across these countries freely with something similar to a Schengen visa. Interestingly, several free trade agreements already exist between these states, so building upon that is not that hard a task. Skinner made his case in the following words. The four countries we propose are very similar in numerous ways. For example, we share the same head of state, the same language, the same Westminster-style parliamentary system, the same common law legal system, similar economic growth rates, similar respect for human rights. What we're advocating is not something out of the ordinary. The organization renamed itself to CANZUK in 2017 and judging by its ambitions, could have significant economic, strategic, and geopolitical implications in the future. Brexit has left the UK isolated from Europe. With a distraught Europe on one side and Big Brother USA on the other, they are caught between a rock and a hard place. This has serious implications for their national security, as they are quite dependent on those two entities for trade and other privileges. So, they are looking to build partnerships with other compatible states. They have easy access to the North Atlantic Ocean, and they voyage across it to trade with Canada and the US. On the other hand, their maritime route to Oceania goes through the Suez Canal and the Red Sea. They can capitalize on their geographical advantages by diversifying their economy. A new alliance on this scale gives them an easy way out by decreasing their dependency on the US and the EU. The Kanzuk plan provides them access to new markets, as well as increasing their geopolitical standing. The establishment of a new Anglophone bloc would strengthen their voice on international platforms. Just as the UK has played second fiddle to the US, so has Canada. Surprisingly, Canada has more in common with the UK, Australia, and New Zealand when it comes to political traditions and lifestyles than with America. This should not come as a surprise, given how different states in the US have diverse views on everything from politics to economics. The four countries in the proposed arrangement do not have the social polarization and civil strife of the US states. So, why not cooperate to become part of a greater whole? However, Kanzuk is not about making grandstands like a revival of the British Empire. The key idea here is trade and migration, and nobody needs those more than Canada. The North American country is lacking a competent labor force that could sustain its economic production in years to come. Simply put, they need more jobs and competent people. Canada is the greatest trade beneficiary in this scenario since it can reach out to Oceania from one coast and trade with the UK on the other. Increased cooperation with other Anglophone states in the world means that they will receive more migrants on their shores, helping them with their weak population issue. Educational exchanges could help them foster an industrious environment and more intriguing job opportunities. Not only will Kanzuk attract more people to Canada, 
but favorable trade agreements would also make Canadian businesses more accessible to the rest of the world. Speaking of accessibility, let's head to Oceania, a place that has very little of it. Australia and New Zealand occupy a separate corner of the earth, but lately, they have been overshadowed by the growing influence of nearby China. What's even more alarming is that some Southeast Asian economies like the Philippines and Indonesia are growing at a breakneck pace, offering more competition to the former British colonies. Now, Australia has always received support from the US, going back to the Cold War days, and the economic and defense cooperation between the two countries has continued to flourish. But this also means that Australia is very much economically tied to the US. Reducing trade barriers and approaching new markets would highly benefit their economy. Australia is also one of the US's most cherished allies when it comes to security and intelligence. The new alliance can see the four countries take joint security measures, hold military exercises, and forge defense agreements. It is important to note that these countries are already part of the Five Eyes, an intelligence alliance, which makes it easier to build on older foundations. Well, what about New Zealand? They're just happy to be there, I guess. They have a smaller population and a smaller economy than Australia, but they get a spot at a major table. They get their opportunity to shine on the global stage, not to mention the economic benefits that come with an arrangement like this. A united Anglosphere would boast a multi-continental presence and comprise 7 million square kilometers, making it collectively larger than any country in the world. The bloc would also have the fourth largest economy in the world behind the US, China, and the European Union. You might ask, why is the US not part of this proposed Anglosphere? The US has been the sole global superpower for the past few decades, but as its authority wanes, other power-sharing coalitions look to fill up that hole. The US maintains great relations with the four countries of this potential coalition, something it will probably continue to do in the future. But as we look at all the pros, let's take a quick look at the cons as well. All these economies are situated quite far from each other. Traveling and communication times are a hassle. As for the economic agreements, they already have FTAs with each other. And even if they improve on it, what will they trade with one another? Three of the four countries rely on their primary industries, so their economic structures are incompatible with a long-term sustainable program. On the social side of things, people will migrate from the UK. Britain has been going through an economic and social slump these past few years and their labor pool will shrink further. Meanwhile, the immigrants to other countries will overload the infrastructure and public services there. So, do the positives outweigh the negatives? Is it feasible? Is Kanzuk a realistic idea or simply an imperialist British dream? Only time will tell. If you like this video, hit the like button and let us know your thoughts below. For more content like this, subscribe to the channel and hit that funny looking bell. That's it for now, and we'll see you in the next one.